Let's see if the sound is working today. I think it is. It looks like it is. If you can't hear me, let me know. And also, let me pause the music in the background. Uh, today, I was, uh, first of all, first of all, let's get some light on. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is half pro in here. Half pro, half no pro. There we go. Now, I look like I'm not in a dark cave, I think. Uh, hopefully that helps a lot. Um, secondly, things that I should probably do. Uh, I have promised to stick closer to my 20 minute time limit. I have a tendency to ramble. Uh, it is a real problem. It's a real problem. And that's why I bought this timer. So let's start the timer. It will let me know how long I have to go. Um, yeah, so the music. Back to that. Uh, the music I was listening to do today is uh, Ella Fitzgerald sings the George and Ira Gershwin songbook. Uh, so, so uber, uber, uber chill. It is a Thursday, which is almost a Friday. It, it is the point of the week where I really have hope uh, that we're gonna get to the weekend. I'm very excited, but I always like the weekend. Even if you're stuck at home, the weekend is awesome because you have a legitimate reason to tell your coworkers, no man, nah bruh, not working. It's Saturday, so chill out. Uh, let me put this back. One of the things that I've been thinking about as I sit at home and uh, have a lot of time on my hands for creative pursuits, I'm wondering what has ever happened to this? Let's see if you can hear it. You guys hear that? That is a tiny music box that I got on a trip that plays the theme song to... Can you hear it? I don't know. Let's see. It looks like my, my stream is looking kind of crazy right now. That's not right. My stream's not supposed to be so crazy. Um... I'm gonna give you a second to catch up to see if you can name the song before I, I move on. Oh, somebody does hear it. That is a good sign. Excellent. My mom can hear it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if mom's going to know the song. She, I don't think she has that channel. Um, but maybe somebody else on the stream does have the channel and they can recognize the song. I guess my point is, with this time on her hands, why is Mr. George Martin not finishing this series of books? This is one of the most epic beginnings of a series of books that I've ever read. And then it sort of leaves you on a cliffhanger. If you know the theme song, pop it in the chat. We'll talk about it. Um, also, since I last saw you guys, I've been trying some new food at the house. I was super excited about it. This is Arepas, which is basically like pan fried hush puppies if you're a southern gentleman like myself so hush puppies is a thing that i love this is even better because it is stuffed with cheese and we had it yesterday with some soup and it was awesome um are you guys experimenting with different food at the house since you have some time on your hands it is a wonderful time to experiment and try new things uh, you have you know, the, the, I guess the downside of trying new things right now is that it's a little tough to get to the store. And if you can get to the store, it might not have all of the cool things that you're used to. I, I see that, um, yeah, my mom does, does not know the song and uh, perhaps is not experimenting with new foods. Uh, but the song, you know what, spoiler alert, the song is from Game of Thrones. It is one of my favorite 
series of books. Well, it is the beginning of uh, presumably what will turn out to be one of my favorite series of books if the series of books ever comes to a close. It was a great show on HBO for about four seasons and then they ran out of books. Uh, and then it was a less great show. So I'm hoping with this time we can finish that series of books. I'm looking at you, Mr. Martin. Finish the series of books, please. Um... Otherwise, it's going to be this. And that's sad. That's sad. I want it to be awesome like this. So, hopefully one day. Uh, main scene. Today, I have my oscilloscopes set up doing a silly fish face. And we're going to talk about that for about 20 minutes. We good? Uh-oh, my sound just went crazy. Hopefully it's going to stick with us. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if it does. Ho hopefully. Um, I'm going to pause here before I continue to see if the sound corrects. It, it appears as if my internet is, my interwebs are having a little bit of trouble today. And yesterday it rained. Generally, with rain comes trouble with my internets. Uh, you'd think that the two would not be related because I imagine an engineer was involved in laying out the whole network. But it is super susceptible to rain. So guys, why? Why is my cable internet connection susceptible to rain? Somewhere along that line is a loose wire. Uh, sound sounds good. Um, great. That is good to hear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlie. Belated birthday. I forgot to, to wish my buddy Charlie a happy birthday on Tuesday. He turned 40 for the 13th time, which is a lot of times to turn 40, but he looks spectacular for a 13-year-old, 40-year-old. Uh, 13-time 40-year-old. Um, happy birthday, man. I crack on you all the time on the show. You're a great sport about it. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Now back to the setup. Uh, we were talking about probes, so this is what's in my probe drawer part two. Last time we discussed the old RTZS30, which I have the box around here somewhere, the RTZS30. Of course, I would put it on upside down. Uh, we talked about uh, the fact that it was single-ended. 30 indicates that it had 3 gigahertz. We dived deep. We dove. We dove. I think it's we dove. We dove deep into the, uh, into the data sheet, which is, you know, data sheets are always wonderful. Wonderful to check out. We are back in the data sheet. The, the delightful, entertaining set of information or perhaps pertinent information is a better description of this. You would think entertaining and pertinent would be able to go hand in hand together, but oftentimes entertaining and pertinent are, they are opposites. And I think that is the case with this data sheet and most data sheets. I, I've, I don't think I've ever read an entertaining data sheet, but I have read many pertinent data sheets. Sadly, the data sheet authors of the world do, do not find humor, I guess. These are, these are for the non-humorous authors. That's where they, they go into technical writing. Um, but the data sheet has a few figures, and I thought that we could recreate these figures in real life to see what the signals look like. It, it is important to understand how your probe works and understand how your probe is going to affect the signal that you're trying to get from your circuit into the oscilloscope. That's what probes do. They get signals from a circuit, some, some electrical circuit, into an oscilloscope, or sometimes they're used with other pieces of test equipment. That's, that's a waste of a good probe, though. Use them with an oscilloscope, people. Use them with an oscilloscope. I forgot to tell you my name. I'm Gabe the Oscope Wizard. That's why I want you to use it with an oscilloscope. Uh, let's get out some accessories. Let me go back. So you can see my setup. So I have my setup and um, I also have a few little accessory boards here. So these are some different 
options for us to probe today. I have um, this is a board we use in our service department to actually calibrate the probe. Let me bring this over a little bit so it's a little closer and we can hopefully, let me back up some more. Oh, I think I'm in the, in the frame. Perhaps it'll be a little easier to see me. Um, so this probe, or this board right here, is a service adapter. Uh, they use it in the service department to calibrate our probes and make sure that they're operating correctly. One of the beauties about this adapter is that, A, it's really easy to plug your probe in. So, I mean, that's maybe the most beautiful thing. Um, and B, it provides a nice wide line or trace right here to probe. So it's a lot easier to probe a big thing than it is a little thing, uh, especially when we're just using the naked eye and we are not going to be soldering anything on. Um, so I'm going to start with this because it's the easiest, it's the lowest hanging fruit, and then we'll kind of expand out into more exciting things. How does that sound, guys? Thumbs up? I guess I'll have to hold this for seven seconds while we figure out if the thumbs are up or not. I think, I think the thumbs are up. I think we're all falling along. Um, in order to plug this in, let me turn off my fish face real quick. I'm going to disconnect this wire. And right here I have a pulse source coming out of the front of my oscilloscope, which is awfully handy. All the oscilloscopes have some sort of pulse source coming out of them. Uh, they're usually called a probe compensation output. Um, but today I'm going to use this snazzy extra pulse source that I have. And I'm going to plug my probe in. And we are going to make some measurements. So I'll plug it right in here. I guess I should probably do it on camera. Otherwise, I'm just talking to the air. There, there's a lot of thumbs up. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. It's, some of these thumbs up, I, I, I really appreciate you guys watching, by the way. It is super helpful to know that my sound's working right, people are listening, I'm making sense. Um, perhaps making sense might be a stretch, but I'm at least being heard. Um, so we have this handy dandy probe holder, which I still love, and we are going to use it. But first things first, let's plug the probe into the oscilloscope. So this probe, we'll go, let's plug it into channel four. So I have my signal running from, well, let's turn that off for a second. My signal running out of my pulse generator through this wire into channel one. So I need to turn on a pulse source. So I will enable this guy and we'll make it nice and slow. And let's trigger on an edge. Make it a little bit bigger. Oh, you know what I didn't do, guys? Real pros press a certain button before they get started when using a piece of test equipment. And I did not do that. And it could be argued that I'm not a real pro now. So if anybody remembers what real pros do, just throw it into the chat. I will wait a moment and chat about a song that I heard the other day on Spotify. I have been getting into the, I mentioned it earlier, I've been getting into the 90s rock anthems playlist on Spotify, which is awesome. It, and, and I um, remembered the song Hunger Strike by Temple of the Dog. Does anybody remember that song? Why did I stop listening to that song? It was awesome. It is awesome. I, I listened to it on repeat for a little while. Um, yes, uh, there was an answer. Reset. That's really close. So I'm going to give you credit. Preset. Preset. Real pros press preset. Now the scope's back to a known state, the beginning state. And I can see this edge, which is perfect. This edge looks nice and sharp. Let's zoom in on this edge so we can get a good picture of it. Um, so that is, that is the signal just passing through a board directly into the scope. So this is the most ideal picture of this edge that we could create. Um, now we are going to compare it to the probe. So I had a couple of pictures. Um, let me see. So I thought I would start with this picture. So this picture has 
a bunch of wires plugged to the front of the probe. So if I go back to my setup here, I have a couple of wires. So I'll plug a wire into the center. So this long wire here. And do I have another wire? Let me grab another wire out of the box. So I got the box right here. Let's grab another wire. So I have a wire on the center conductor, which is the signal section of my probe. And I'm going to also connect a wire to the ground side of my probe because it's a single-ended probe. And the way single-ended probes work is they measure a signal referenced to ground. Um, and ground in the case of a single ended probe hooked to an oscilloscope that's plugged into the wall is your actual earth ground because the power cable on the back of the probe has a, has a ground pin. Actually, if your house is wired up right or if you're actually working in the lab, probably not a lot of people are using the 16 gigahertz oscilloscope at their house. Um, that will go to earth ground. Uh, so sometimes it's not good to use single-ended probes because they'll tie your system to earth ground. And if your system can't go to earth ground, that can be real bad news. Luckily, I'm just probing a single-ended signal. Let's see if I can get a better picture of what's going on here. So I have my probe being held by my handy probe holder. And now I am going to connect center conductor to this pin. I think I'm going to anyway. I've gone out of the camera. I've gone out of the camera. There we go. Probably out of focus, but still there. Oh. <laughs> we do have some beginners. My mom is an oscilloscope beginner. She, I think at this point, realizes that oscilloscopes and gyroscopes are not the same thing. But that is a constant debate with us. Are oscilloscopes and gyroscopes the same thing? The answer is no, but up for debate. So I have now connected my center conductor to the signal and my ground side uh, to ground. So I have this probe plugged in correctly. You see it's all held by my nice probe holder which makes it very convenient. So now if I turn my probe on, uh, let's see if we can find this signal. Um, I think we probably can. Let's, let's uh, Let's trigger on the signal and see what it looks like. Uh, get a little bit more time. Okay, uh, let's... Got some wildness. Wildness. Um, this is the signal as probed by my crazy wires. So I can compare the two signals and on a casual observation, by a casual observer, would you say that these two signals look the same? I can drag them to different grids so they're a little bit easier to see. Does this look like this? What do you think? Do they uh, look the same? No? Yes? No? Maybe? Who knows? I, I, would, I would say, I would posit that these two signals do not look the same. Um, <laughs> welcome! Welcome latecomers! Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we are in the middle of trying to use a probe to probe a signal which is what probes do. They probe signals. And we are trying to figure out if this signal, which is just a, uh, my pulse generator running straight into my, my oscilloscope front end, looks the same as this signal, which is coming through my probe. Now, I'm using a really weird setup. I'm using this setup uh, right here, which is um, a bunch of wires on the front of my probe which is actually not the best way to probe it 
And the reason why is because there's a ton of inductance. You can see 60 Henry's, 60 nano Henry's. That's tiny little Henry's have snuck into my circuit and they are stealing bandwidth. So every accessory that you plug onto the front of your scope steals bandwidth. And that is why, let's see if I can, do I have a light on? Let me turn the light off. There we go. That is why this signal does not look like this signal. They are uh, different because I'm using way too many accessories. And I see this all the time when I am in laboratories. People have bought very expensive, high quality probes, and then they have basically ruined them by using all these long wires. Do not use long wires with your fancy probes. Use long wires with your not fancy probes. They don't have much bandwidth to begin with, so there's, there's, no, reason to, um, there's no reason to spend all the money on a fancy probe if you're not going to use it correctly. I, oh, there was a good question. Do I have the same setting on both channels? So let's put the same setting on both channels, and you can see that, uh, no, it, it was not the same setting on both channels. It was, in fact, a slightly different setting. Uh, because uh, my probe is kind of, it is ringing. That's, it's called ringing. Um, and that is because I have such a long ground lead. Oh, oh my goodness. Guys. Five minutes left. I can hear it, Mom. It was five minutes left, guys. Five minutes. That was my five minute warning. Um, so today. Today, let's go back over what we did and why we did it. We plugged in the probe to a signal. We used a special adapter board to make all of that happen. If I go back, we used a special adapter fixture so that my pulse could be passed through the fixture into the front of the oscilloscope untouched. Well, as untouched as it can be. Once you hook a probe onto it, it's touched. Um, but we could disconnect the probe, and the signal will be passed through untouched. Let's go back and trigger on channel one. That looks great. And then we connected our probe. So let's redo that. Connect my probe. Ba, ba, ba. We connected a probe. We connected the ground side of the probe. Uh, well, we, we attempted to connect the ground side of the probe. And then we successfully connected the ground side of the probe. Oh, we got some yelling outside. It's getting real outside, guys. There is a war on outside. Um, and then we compared the passed through signal, the, the original signal on channel one to the probe signal on channel four. And we tried to determine, was there a difference? And using this setup with these crazy long accessories, there was a difference. Now, just because something's called out in a data sheet, doesn't mean you should use it that way. It just means that is a way that you could use it. So I encourage you, when you are using your probes, keep your accessories short. It's going to make your signal look a lot better, and it is going to give you the most bandwidth. And since you've spent all this money on these probes, please use them correctly. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't buy a screwdriver to use as a hammer in general. Although I have used a screwdriver as a hammer, I can't recommend it. It did not work great. So if you use a 3 gigahertz or buy a 3 gigahertz probe, use it to try to get 3 gigahertz. In the next episode, we will continue going through this ZS30, use the different accessories, and determine what the signal looks like. I think it kind of, it'd be kind of neat. If you guys like it, let me know. Leave a, leave a note in the comments. Also, I still don't know all the nerds in the world, and I would love to meet them, so share this. OscopeWizard.com, let a nerd in your life know, and have them join. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, YouTube.com. Uh, Oscope Wizard. Also, if you don't follow me on Instagram, at Oscope Wizard. You can, I'm trying to do a scope picture of the day. I do a scope picture of the day most days. Uh, and we had the, the fish face today, which I thought was kind of funny. I'm going to hang out in the chat, answer any questions, and just 
chat. That's what you do. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, I'm Gabe, the Oscoat Wizard. Talk to you later.